You are locked into the padded room with DJ Waffles on RollingOut.com. DJ Waffles on the check-in, man. You already know that it is your boy DJ Waffles on the check-in, and you're tuned into the padded room on Rolling Out Live, and I'm here with my special guest, Jay Alexander. I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting for this sit-down. So now that we got you in the city, I get a chance to talk to you, pick your brain, and let the world know what it is that you got going on. Right there. It's all good. I'm glad to be here. Love Atlanta. Definitely. So tell everybody who you are and your titles as of right now. Oh, man. Jesus. Well, give us the give us the, <laughs> the, the soft sweet spot for us. <laughs> I happen to be one of the co-founders of Food. Okay. I don't know if anybody ever heard of that. <laughs> maybe, come on. Maybe, come maybe, you know, you can live under a rock or something. Right. Actually, you know what? I met one person who didn't know. But I could tell why he didn't know. <laughs> and why was that? Because <laughs> he just, he looked like he didn't know who he was. <laughs> but long story <laughs> short is, um, I'm one of the co-founders of Food. Right. Started in 1992. With a guy named David John, I'm not sure if you ever heard yeah. of him either. He was a shark tank guy. <laughs> right? right? He's the shark, I'm the dolphin. Okay. And my other two partners, Carl Keith. Right. So we created something, you know, legacy brand. Right. A little something. So, all right, so let's let's start there because it, it, you do got a, a, a lot of stuff going on. Take me to the six grand and getting ready to start football. Alright, so so basically let me let, let, let's break it down from the beginning. Okay. So I just tell the whole food story. Okay. So Damon, right? Mm -hmm. So Damon's really sharp from day one. Like that guy, I mean, all praise to him. He's like visionary when it comes to his business. Mm -hmm. Like he's the type of guy that sell you, you know, water. Mm -hmm. You know. So you he used to actually to go way back, he used to steal the Mirrors from down the block, right? <laughs> like when we was back in kids, he used to steal the mirrors book for right now. and then sell them, <laughs> right? Right? He used to, I used to do a lot of things like that. I used to um, work around lobster. Long story short, but what happened was he was making some hats, mm -hmm. little tie top hats. Um, you basically take a tool, you tie, you sew it, and then you kind of tie it at the top, mm -hmm. and that was a style way, way, way back then, way mm -hmm. back like nineteen ninety something. Mm -hmm. um, I happened to be coming home from Death Storm. I went in the military, mm -hmm. so I was going to FIT, mm -hmm. and um, I um, was in an accident in the Navy, mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to get some money out of it. You're like 50% disabled too, right? Yeah, 50% disabled. Okay. Um, I go to VA every mm -hmm. two months. I get a shot mm -hmm. in my back. Mm -hmm. Oh, goodness. Like, like that. And you're still going through that as a writer? I still go through that. Every, every, every three months, I get a shot. Okay. Um, and um, I had $6,000 from that. Mm -hmm. And um, he, was, he was making a hat. And I was like, oh, whoa. Well, not the hat, because the hat, who cares? Nobody even cared about that. It wasn't, that wasn't it. But what was it was he had this label, and it was like black and like purple. Mm -hmm. So it said food. So I'm like... Ooh, what, what does that mean? I mean, the, the graphics was nice, cause mm -hmm. you know, and I was like, "What does that mean?" He said, "Four us buyers." And I looked at him like he had four heads, like what? <laughs> like, but I saw right. Like all of a sudden, I saw Fubu. Right. I mean, I saw it for what it is today. Then, and he was like, "Well, you know, let's start a clothing line." I'm like, "Let's start a clothing line." He's looking like start a clothing line. I don't know. Like we can't do that. Like we young guys from the block. Like how are we right. gonna start a clothing line? And I said, all right, well, listen, we don't have the money, we don't have what? I said, I got money. So I had $6,000. I gave him $5,000. And I kept a thousand books and clothes. Mm -hmm. And that's what I thought we really started. That's crazy, though. See, that's what that, that's the type of friends I need. Just give me, well, let me give well, them the money. Well, I know, think they can probably make some, they can probably make some better investments. Well, like you them. know what's funny? It's like, what people don't do, like, nobody here to finance your dreams. Right. To be honest. Right. You go to the bank, you can get an investor, you can do, do all that. In the end, they're going to take everything you got. Right. Why? Because, you know, you don't have it. So, you got to invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't invest in themselves. So now, if I do take on some investors, it's, mm -hmm. it's, on, it's on me. Mm -hmm. I can say, well, listen, I don't like that deal. Mm -hmm. Right? And again, when people always look at us like, oh, you sold food, well, you did this. No, we never sold anything. Mm -hmm. We sold rights. To, uh, to Asia and let them use it. Right. So we get paid, you know, 
per perpetuity forever and ever. Amen. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's a big. We word. just yeah, sit that's, back. You know, that's, that's, that's a big bank. That's the big word. Right? If you that's ever get a word. contract, perpetuity. You mean that, that means forever. <laughs> I seen that in one of my contracts. <laughs> right. So, um, back to the to, to the right. story. So, um, we went out though. You know, started putting together. We we listed our, our friends, Keith, Carl, because actually Carl started with David first, right. just making the hats, and they were selling. Them. Mm-hmm. And then I came along and said, "Look, this is bigger than what it is. Let's let me take help. Let me take this to the next level." And then Keith was the other partner. He came along afterwards because he was actually working. He had a, he had another job. He was a property manager mm-hmm. for some buildings um, in Manhattan. And after a while, I think something happened with his job, and he left. And he said, "Hey, well, I'll hook up with you guys." So we were just having fun. Right. Like to be honest, it wasn't really about money. It was just about me. It was for me. It was about just creating clothes because that's what I wanted to do. Right. I actually wanted to be a buyer. Mm-hmm. And and my story is, I was working at Macy's, mm-hmm. and I quit because I was like, I was the type of guy, um, very ambitious. Mm-hmm. I really wanted to. Be a buyer. I would kind of did. I got the eyes of like the um, merchandise managers and the VPs, and they were like, "Okay, I like this guy. He comes to work on time." Um, and I used to um, be at the tie department, right? So I used to put the, I had to put together suits and style everybody um, that came in. And I don't know if the manager kind of felt some kind of way, like right. you know what I mean, like for me, you know, I don't know, right. maybe I don't know, but he wound up. Telling me one day, putting me in the office and saying, hey, well, we found this tie, like, on the floor, and, you know, kind of accused me of trying to steal it. Wow. Now, granted, back then, you know, there's a showcase, and I'm sitting behind ties that cost $400, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, sometimes, like, in, in, there's even ties that can cost $1,000 with rhinestones on it. Mm-hmm. Now, this tie, he's accusing me of stealing is $9.99 on sale. Well, my discount comes out to like $3.99. Right. So I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, really? Like, you want to excuse me to sit on a tie I can buy for $3.99? Wow. Now, if you said that, then I'll be like, right. yo, I, I, I understand why you're trying to do it, but I didn't. Actually, well, my mom's trying to steal. I'm trying to move up. Mm-hmm. And I quit. And I said, the next time I come back here, I'm selling to you. I'll never foot, step, step foot in Macy's again. Right. Now, the next time I step foot in Macy's, we were in the windows of Macy's because we were selling, selling them. Wow. That's, that's the next time I stepped in there. Wow. So tell me how did y'all, y'all get into the part of like marketing for me? Like cause um, I know that y'all started hitting like a lot of video sets. Y'all was getting these yeah. rappers to actually put it on and stuff like that. How well, did that work out? I mean, the way, the way Damon tells the story, you know, we, we basically had like maybe three or four or five t-shirt samples, mm-hmm. right? So we would take that Mm-hmm. Go to the video set, sit there, and go, hey, can you put this on? Mm-hmm. Put it on, right? After he finishes, take it off. <laughs> you go home, right. you dry clean, and you go to another video set. Wow, that's nice. So we were troopers when it came to that. Like, we just, we, you know, and again, you know, now we're in history books, we're in museums, and for all the stuff that we did as far as marketing, it's like legendary. I mean, you, I mean, we didn't even speak about the, the LL commercial. Oh, yeah, we did the Gap. The, yeah, with the Gap. Right. And he did the commercial. He said, right. for us buyers. For us buyers on the low. And then the Gap actually pulled the campaign yeah. after putting 30 million into well, it. Well, no, they didn't pull it. They kept it going. They kept it going. They kept it going. They kept it going. For 30 million, going. and that's what, that kind of catapulted Charlie. Yeah, there. I mean, because we'll think about it. The Gap was the biggest thing yeah. since back then. They were right. huge. Right. And they wanted to get into our market. Right. So, but we had a deal with LL. Mm-hmm. So LL was like, if you want to deal with me, you gotta, you gotta deal with them. Wow. And they were like, fine, okay, <laughs> all right, no problem. <laughs> oh my God, that's a nice rap. That sounds great. Right. And we were like, <laughs> <laughs> they won it. Oh my God. I was like, cool. So after that, so we were the first African American, you know, clothing company to have a commercial. Right. When someone else was done. Wow. And then we, now we commercial business, so we actually we had four or five commercials since then. Yeah, did a lot of, yes. Yeah, so a, a, like a, a, a lot of different lot, videos. A too. lot of marketing. And it's funny because, you know, 
people call it branding now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was branded then, but we were just doing stuff and we were just doing it. Like, we, right. like, if we see somebody doing A, we didn't care what they were doing. Right. We just did what we did. Right. You know? And I never say that I'm the biggest and the, the best. It was the best. Mm -hmm. We were the best marketing brand. Right. Because if I'm going to give clout to anybody, I need it to Carl Kanai. Because okay. he's the forefather of how this all started. Right. If it wasn't for Carl Kanai, there wouldn't be no doors anybody else. It just we took it and took the door off and turned it into So let me ask you is, so let me ask you a question like this then. So how do you feel about like Gucci giving Dapper Dan like the opportunity to have like a store in Manhattan and then they actually recognize um, him for No, I mean it's, it's great, but to be honest, he's a bootlegger. Right. I get that. I mean I I get I, he's I, I, get, I get that. I you get know that. if you really wanna put in the facts I mean, See, it, it, you know it's so crazy? I have a dasher. Okay, so he was a happy dasher or he was bootlegger. Either way, right. put, him, put him together. Right. And see, the, my thing about it, too, is just like, when they gave him that position, it's like the stuff that he's making is just like, it's just like so, like, no. It's like, like, I, I, like I'm, not, I'm not against it. Nah, like, I see you. I, like, listen, I'm I, not against it, but I'm just like, the, the New York sign on like the slippers and like the shoes on the back, back. I'm just like, are they really letting you have like or is this for the culture like they really just try to make it seem like we know that you did this we know that you helped boost the sales or whatever but at the same time it's like are you really having creative control because the creative control is not like it's no shots at him it's just like i'm just looking at it for going in the gucci store like the other weekend i'm just like i don't know if this is like really his thought process i'm just thinking um, that they gave him a situation and that is like we'll have some creative control over it. But well, you know, he had a store. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So the store is in Harlem. So you go in and you can go by, by appointment only. Okay. And he kind of takes that vibe of back then. You mm -hmm. know, I don't know. I want to say he was in the 80s. Mm -hmm. You know, so he takes that vibe and kind of sort of twists it for today. Mm -hmm. And I think, to be honest, some brands. People just like because they like. Right. And again, it goes back to the marketing thing. Mm -hmm. You know, if you market something enough, regardless of what they put out, you're going to just take it and like it. Just like right. a nine times a ten, you hear yeah. a song. You, yeah, after, right. If you just play it and play it, play it, right. play it, play it. And it's just there. You're probably after a while, you, somehow you're going to find something to like about it. Unless it's just straight garbage. Now, a true fashion person is looking at it as he's just interpreting and he's like, wow, this, ooh, this is nice. Mm -hmm. But, you know, People's style. So I'm not gonna wear it. So let me ask you this: Do you wear more Fubu stuff than anything now? Still, that you had you you. With the um. No, nah, I'm not. Nah, listen, I'm a I'm an equal opportunity guy. I wear everything. Okay. And I usually wear. To be honest, I usually wear suits. People sometimes people like they even own jeans. Right. <laughs> yeah, I got some jeans in the warehouse. <laughs> All right. So how did y'all get to how did y'all get to a point where everybody was talking about like you guys were actually given like eight year and like. The four countries like the rights to like football. We'll, we'll well, to that. Well, you gotta understand, overseas mm -hmm. is a huge market for everybody. Right. Because, you know, there was a time where it's like they just loved anything American. Mm -hmm. um, and so they came to us, and we had like, we, we had stores in Sweden, Japan, China, um, uh, sheesh, where else? Um, I mean, the list goes on. Still, still, still 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 um, some of them are, some of them not. Okay. Um, it's not as big as Africa. I actually went to Africa and to open some stores, and we actually sat with, went to Nelson Mandela's house because mm -hmm. he wanted to thank us. Wow. So we went to his house, sat with his family, and he was thanking us for, for actually you know, doing that because we're Americans. But there's an affinity for American stuff when it comes to overseas. Wow. So we had... Um, I, I, I gotta say we were the biggest, one of the biggest, if not the biggest brand, mm -hmm. um, you know, there. So what we do is we give the license to actually use the name. Right. And but we monitor it because we have a distributor there and they would look and make sure everything is everything is good. Mm -hmm. So we get checked every, you know, right. three months, six months, or whatever depends upon what that deal is. Mm -hmm. Um so they pay a royalty. So right. we get a royalty check. That's what that's what that's what the whole thing's about. So we get we on the they were giving us royalties so much, and it was like, well, we might as well just buy the rights and keep it. Right. Right? And that's what they tried to do. Okay. So we would sell 
but to a distributor, we give them the exclusive rights to actually to have FUBU and to be able to do it. Hmm. All right, and so then after that, you guys actually expand into different entities. Now you got FUBU oh, Radio. Man, we didn't have, uh, I mean, like, right, can you, right, can you explain to me, like, how, like, what else you, know you what? You know, do? You know what, you know what we do? And what sparked it? We know what we do. And it's for us five for a reason. Mm -hmm. And what we, how we thought was, we want to make, if we like something, then we just make it. Right. If we need something, we make it. Mm -hmm. um, there was a time when videos, music videos were like popping. I mean, that's, how, that's how we market it. Those are our little commercials. So now it's not, now a lot of the um, rappers start getting their own line. So now they're going to wear their own line and not necessarily our line. Mm -hmm. So... What we had to think about is now, well, how are we going to touch people? So right. what we do, all right, we start our own television network. Right. Okay, so you know what? Radio. All right, so we like music, right? We get our, we get our own artists. We start our own record label. Okay, well, how are we going to get on the radio? Okay, well, we'll start our own radio. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> So y'all just y'all just figured out ways that y'all can actually start what it is that you guys need. But we just exactly just do it. So what's been more profitable for you? Has it been the clothing or like any of the other entities that you? I mean, everything is all relative. I mean, mm -hmm. like I said, we don't necessarily look at it as profit mm -hmm. because profit's gonna come. Right. You know, if you're always looking trying to make a dollar, you know, it's just not good. You gotta just be happy about what you're doing. So what, what, what makes you align with that type of focus? Like, all right, this is what I'm going to do, and then when the money gets here, it'll get here. Like, what makes you, what makes you stay focused on that path? Like? Um, it took years to have that focus, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Because when you, we built something so big. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, we had three museums. Wow. And one of them was overseas. So, when you're there, it's not about you. It's bigger than you. Mm -hmm. So once something becomes bigger than you, you just have to let it go. Like, it's not about the money. It's about the legacy. It's about, again, for what's by us. So, with that being said, we're going to go to, quick, to a quick commercial break. Get tuned into the padded room. or are rolling out live. It's your boy DJ Waffles on the check. And we'll be right back. Wow. You are locked into the padded room with DJ Waffles on rollingout.com. It's your DJ Waffles on the check in, man. You already know what it is, your boy DJ Waffles on check and you're tuned back into the padded room on Rolling Out Live, and I'm here with my special guest, Jay Alexander. And now that we were talking about now the speeding of the process, like trying to get yourself ready to go on, like say you being on a tour of yeah. entrepreneurship, like how did you get into that? Um, I wound up going to a convention mm -hmm. for the Urban League, mm -hmm. and I like what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And actually, in New York, I'm the president of the New York State Black Team of Commerce. Mm -hmm. So I do this for a living. I'm on the board of National. Mm -hmm. And um, I liked I liked their style. And they were looking, the, the youth group, mm -hmm. so there's youth entrepreneurship. It's kind of weird because it's, the, the demo is 18 to 40. And I'm like, okay, youth? Well, am I old then? <laughs> <It's like> 48. <laughs> so, right. whatever. So um, they said, hey, you know, I spoke at a convention, at the convention, mm -hmm. and one of the guys, kind of one of the presidents pulled me aside and said, hey, would you like to, you know, speak again? I was like, of course, you know? And I love you going out and helping because you gotta, you gotta always give back. And I don't say you give back, you gotta pick somebody else up. Because right. give back kind of suggests that you took something from somebody. So I'm not saying you wanna say I give, I'm giving back, right. I'm just doing, what I do, you know, try to help and bring somebody forward. Because right. they say that the millennials, millennials tell me that we didn't, uh, we didn't help them. We kind of left them stranded. Right. I don't necessarily think I left them stranded. I try to grab you, you run away. What am I supposed to do? Right. You know. Yeah. So, um, so I have an affinity for really trying to help others, right. and I'm. I've done all I could do. I mean, if I die tomorrow, my life, I'm I'm in a museum. If the animals come down right now, they're gonna be like, oh, I know that that guy. They may not know you everybody know, else. You know but so they don't know, they don't know me. Yeah, you know so crazy because I was about to ask you that. I was about to say, like, when you're going, like, what type of legacy do you 
you want to leave behind? Like, cause you like remember right now you just told me you're 48. Mm -hmm. You no kids. You're single. I'm like, what do you want to leave? What do you want to leave behind? What do you want to? What do you want people to know about you? Because like you're just on the path of just going, going, giving, going, 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 giving. Like, does it get to a point where you want to just relax and be home with like a family, a wife, and kids, and like? I mean, of course, you want to, but I mean, again, I think everybody has a path. Right. And I guess, you know, to be spiritual, when God says it's time mm -hmm. and that woman comes in my life, then it'll, it'll happen. I mean, it's a few times I thought it was, a few times I hoped it was, but right. then it just didn't work out. You know? So, you know, I guess because this I don't is the have someone, we needed to because have. Because I don't have right. someone, it's probably I just kind of put all my energy to doing all these other things. Right. You know. So what type of advice would you give to a young entrepreneur that wanna follow his footsteps of you? Like they wanna get into fashion, they wanna get into clothing, they wanna get into television, they wanna do the things that you guys have accomplished. Like what type of advice do you actually give to those type of guys? And I'm gonna say this is gonna sound really weird. I wouldn't give them any advice based off of me. Right. Why? Because what I did, I can't I'm not saying that someone else can't do. Mm -hmm. Because everyone is different. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to find it in you. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't use me to push you. Mm -hmm. You have to have your own drive. Because to be an entrepreneur, it's not the easiest thing in the world. Do you think that everybody has no. the skills to be an entrepreneur? No. no. But, what, but when is the point, when do you get to the point where you need to stop and like be like, this is what I need to do. I need to be a worker because I can't be a boss. Um... It's, you have that person has to find that person has to and actually I'm starting a, um, a course mm -hmm. for that okay um actually two part course I have a course on entrepreneurship and you kind of just it gives you all the steps mm -hmm. to be an entrepreneur and if you could pass that test then yes you could do it mm -hmm. right and two like if you when you want to start a business mm -hmm. you go backwards you don't go forwards mm -hmm. and my point is you find out everything that can go wrong. And once you answer all those questions, then you start. I'm actually, actually, wow, uh, that's, I guess that's I can, a, that's, a, that's a great way to look at it. I can, say, I can say this, um, uh, I'm actually going to start an entrepreneur. Um, it's, it's actually with um, Carly Rae mm -hmm. um, from Atlanta. Um, she's, we're getting together, teaming up to do something where we're going to, um, Teach people how to open a store, okay. uh, retail store, and online store. Mm. So that's another thing I'm going to be doing. Well, right. tell us a little bit about the um, seven television shows that you have. Oh, oh my God, um, we have uh, quite a few reality shows. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's just so many. Okay, so <laughs> first one is oh, what's her name? Darn it, I think Charlie Baltimore. Charlie Baltimore, yes. Thank so you. Charlie Baltimore is the the kickoff one, mm -hmm. um, and. Um, we, she, it's her, it's her family, because mm -hmm. she has uh, two daughters, one is a DJ, yeah. and it, it's all been kind of really more about the DJ and, and, and her daughters and mm -hmm. the relationship with her daughters, mm -hmm. so that's the kind of the biggest one. The other ones are, um, we have um, basketball, I'm sorry, uh, not basketball, um, boxing wives, mm -hmm. um, so we have uh, Zab Judah's wife and a few other boxing Boxing wise. My boxing wise. So okay. Yeah, that, I get it. which is, I mean, which is kind of different because they go through a lot. Brother. Right. Because that, those guys right. are crazy. Yeah, like the box, guys, right. that you got to be crazy. Right. So <laughs> yeah, you got to be crazy because if you want to hit somebody in the head, they want to hit you back. Like, right. you know, get beat in the head a couple times and they go home and they take that anger out on right. a lot. So there's a lot of stuff. Else. A lot of stuff going on. Yeah, especially. Right. Yeah. And so, um, and then we have, um, we have this one show where there's artists, there's a whole bunch of artists, not just artists, but there's other people that don't get credit for what they've done. Right. So you kind of have to watch that when it comes out. I can't, I don't want to collect a lot of cats for that. There's a lot of people that didn't remember that got credit for what they did and got, got it stolen. Right. So we found a, a bunch of people that when you, like one woman, when you hear her voice, you're like, that sounds just like, and she got her song stolen. So is it better, so do you come up with these concepts or do people actually come to you with these concepts and you be like, all right, now this makes sense, I'll, I'll put something in on it to make it actually happen? Or um, 
You just got no. It's some. It's almost like I executive produce, but you just know the culture. Mm-hmm. I have a partner. Um, his name is uh, Roberto Rush. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, he was. I guess I could say it. I don't know. Maybe he, I don't know if he wants me to not say it. But he was the one in the original. He's like his original concept uh-huh. was the was the was the start of oh, pretty much all these reality shows. Okay. So love and hip hop was his creation. Wow. They just kind of changed it around and flipped it a little bit. You know when it got to the, to the uh. So is he gonna be on that show? Oh no, he's not gonna show. He, he <laughs> right, because I'm trying to figure this out. Like, just, no, he was the original, original creator. It was called something else, mm-hmm. and they they kind of flipped it a little bit, and in turn, um, he had a little fight with them because him and Mona were, uh, were they wanted to be partners in the end. Wow. Um, then he left, and now he he's my partner. Wow. So so you already know you already got the sauce. So I got the sauce. I got I got the I got the end <laughs> on the action. Yeah. yeah. So he's oh, like man. he's all money. He's right. like all money. So, and then again, you know, again, I've been, I've been around the world. I, I, I you know, so I know, I know what we want. So, what's the best way to, what's the best way for an entrepreneur to approach you to actually look like they need your help? Um, I mean, Instagram. I mean, you can always hit me. Like, I'm, I'm an open book. Mm-hmm. But what I don't, what I, I what actually you dislike. What I dislike is you're not listening. Or even more than that, is I'm not doing your work for you. Mm-hmm. Once I have to do the work, what happened is hit. You say, hey, yo, I want to start a water company. All right. I know some people that know some people. All right. So I can help you. I'll help you. And I'll hook you up and I'm labeling such and such, such. But then all of a sudden, I start doing all the work. Right. Where do they do that at? <laughs> <laughs> Right. You know, so after a while, I just, or if I tell you something and you're not actually doing it, right? you know, because then you're going to blame it on me when it doesn't work. Because a lot of times when people have this fixation on what they want to do, mm-hmm. right? And a lot of times they don't even know. Now, I have this, I just happen to have experience and expertise and everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, shit, we had car rims, mm-hmm. you know, at one time. Yeah, we did. Right. Right. So... If I'm going to tell you something, I'm telling you from based off my knowledge. Right. And my word is bomb. So, listen. But you sometimes people get so focused on what they think they want to do and or what they... And it's it just doesn't make sense. Like, listen. All right, so fine. You do it your way. You got to do it. Fine. Go ahead. And then I'll... I'll listen, they'll pay me. And I'll say, listen, I don't want any more money. I'm good. Wow. And I cut it short. Is there anything in life that you want to accomplish that you haven't accomplished yet? I guess that goes back to the family part. Because mm-hmm. you know? I haven't That's accomplished that. How about we take you speed dating or something? Man, go ahead, man. I'm saying, we go speed dating. Take the boy out there, I'm saying. Go ahead, man. Actually, I have two goddaughters. Right. So, that's like my... Magnets? That's like my thing. So, right. you know, I feel like if, you know, maybe like when I get... 800. I ain't about to play with them. Yeah, 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 uh, no, nobody is reaching 800. They'll, they'll, you know, they'll be like, hi, I hope you can get downstairs for all of you. Oh you my did. goodness. But, um, you know. but you do, you definitely Tell do. Tell her I for camp. <laughs> See, that's probably, that's probably the situation. That's what's not being said. See, we done got through all the nah, good nah, stuff. Nah, 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 yeah. nah. That was, that was, a, that was a joke. No, 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 no. Yo, I know, not being a trainee, he's like, nah, it's waffles. No, 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 honestly, honestly. honestly. What's, your, what's your type, though? I like a hard, I like a worker. Right. I like somebody, that, a businesswoman. I like somebody right. that's, um, that's driven. Because in the end, I want her, to, I want that for my kid, my kid. Right. You know what I'm saying? My daughter. Right. I don't want my daughter to be like, looking at another man. Right. You know, for what he's going to provide for her. Right. You know what I'm saying? I want her to be like, you know. We take your applications on the room. Same. So all y'all watch right same. now, ladies, slide in this DM now. Slide we gonna make something, we gonna make something, we gonna make something happen. So listen, while you're here, since you just got to Atlanta, what else do you have on here to do while you're oh, here? Oh, yeah, I have, um, I'm doing the We Buy Black conference. Okay. Which is uh, tomorrow, was it Thursday, was it Thursday? So Friday, Saturday. Okay. So I'm gonna speak there. Okay. Don't. Um, I think both days. Okay. So um, you know, again, entrepreneurship, just helping, you know, mm-hmm. trying to 
bring us up. I mean, because in the end, you know, we need generational wealth. Right. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I agree. I mean, and a lot of times, and it doesn't start. It starts with us. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be? But because generations, I was saying this the other day, and I said, what I make today, mm -hmm. it's not for me. Right. It's for you know down the line. Right. You know, and we have we all have to understand it. Like everybody's about for self, and they only care about themselves. And that's why we don't have generational wealth like we do. I mean, in some cases we do, but not. How do you how do you break the mold of a person that you think that's selfish? Like, what do you like? What do you do? Like, if you're mentoring somebody that they just have like, it's not like selfish, like blatant like selfish, but the things that they do is more so they're concerned about their self and they're really not thinking about everybody else. How do you how do, like how do you mentor somebody out of the, those types of states if that's it's, if that's the right question? It's, right? it's very hard, um, and it takes a lot of time. Right. Because to be honest, a lot of people are actually narcissists. Mm -hmm. They have narcissistic qualities. Mm -hmm. A lot of them. Mm -hmm. A lot of people you wouldn't even know it. Mm -hmm. Um, and that becomes that comes from mothers and fathers not kind of being around, or the mother not really being around, working and doing other things, and right. then the baby doesn't never get attached to. To the mom, it's long story short, there's a whole science behind it. So, some people you can't help mm -hmm. because they're wired wrong. It's mm -hmm. nothing you can do about it. And then the other people that you can help, you just gotta kill them with what you gotta want better for not just for you, but mm -hmm. better for others. Right. Because you won't, you'll never get to the level you wanna be at unless somebody, you bring somebody else up. And if you do get to that point, if you don't get back, you're gonna lose it all. And I hate that, but again, I said I hate that word, give back. But in that's this case, you have to say give back because most times so that's for our people that are selfish. So if you're selfish, you have to give back mm -hmm. because you've just been raping the culture or raping everybody else just to get you money. Mm -hmm. Wow. That was the piece that we need to roll on. So listen, man, let everybody know how they can follow you on social media. Oh, man. If they uh, want to do some business. <laughs> oh, you know what? My, my website is jalexandermartin.com. But it's spelled J, the list letter J, uh, Alexander, M A R T I N dot com. Uh, or if you just want to go straight to forgetting about that and go to uh, Instagram, it's a, a Fashion Mind, letter A Fashion M I N D. Um, hit me on DM, you know, whatever, however you want to do it. Yeah, hit him on, ladies, hit him on the DM. What's up? There you go. Here I'm just go. saying, listen, Here we go. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my clock, I'm like, yo, listen, we about to find somebody for my guy. But he's not looking, but he's going to find, because I, I, I just know when you go, when you do, I just know you're going to be so happy because it's like, now it's like, you know, as the, much as you have for yourself, right, it's supposed exactly. To you. Now that everything's like, you never get, you, but in that case, you're supposed to get ahead, because that woman, that's by your size. You're like, yo, I don't know about that. I don't know about him. I, you know what I mean? Right. That's the, it's like a balance for you. It's like a balance for you. So, right. you Definitely. know, so you just run and run and run and run and run. And that woman's going to sit there and say, come here, hey, this is not a lot. I got you. Y'all already know the type you look for. This is your boy DJ Waffles on Check It. Make sure y'all tune in next week to Love and James Alexander on no, the podcast. No, here go. They're going to turn it to <laughs> Love and Hip Hop Jane, right? Yeah. Love and Fashion, whatever. <laughs> Nah, make sure y'all subscribe below. Hey, man. Mona! <laughs> Let's partner on that. Make sure y'all subscribe below, man. Make sure y'all stay locked in. Next Tuesday, y'all know this was a Thursday, but make sure next Tuesday y'all locked in 7.30, same place, same time. It's your boy DJ Waffles. Make sure y'all follow 2 Plus 1 Agency and y'all follow me on Instagram at DJ underscore Waffles 8. Bow. You are locked into the padded room with DJ Waffles on RollingOut.com. DJ Waffles on check it, man.